Welcome back to The Rustic Wife, I'm Alana. So today uh, my plan is to make some wild grape jelly out of the juice that I just made last week. And so we'll get to that. I'll leave a link above on how I juiced those wild grapes that were in my freezer. And then, but right now I have torn apart my cupboards you can see behind me. Um, whenever I start a project, I kind of go down a rabbit hole and branch off on another. So I'm gonna finish this and then we will get to making the grape jelly. See, I'm organizing my spice rack. Um, I had to pull my cupboards apart. I've just got stuff everywhere. All right, so I'm just about to do the jelly and it is 10 to six. That's typical Atlanta fashion. Um, I just got into cleaning and tearing apart the cupboards and the drawers and yeah, so I just worked on all that. And then of course I'm making jelly at supper time, but it's lucky I have leftovers. So that's what we're having tonight. So I'm going to get to making this jelly and I'm gonna show you how I do it. All right, here is my juice that I juiced the other day using the steam juice extractor. And I have that. Got my measuring cups and my sugar ready. I've got my stock pot that will be boiling the jelly in. I also have my canning pot ready to go. And I also have my lids ready. They've been washed and with hot soapy water and dried. So today I'm going to be using pectin, and it is the crystals and not the liquid. So the recipe actually calls for five cups of juice to seven cups of sugar, but I usually do seven cups of juice to about five and a half cups of sugar, maybe six. It's still a ton of sugar, but it's not as much. And I know these boxes always say to follow the recipe to a T, but I just boil mine longer and I'll show you um, how to test for the gel stage. I'm going to be doing two batches today. So I've got two boxes of Serto. Um, I don't usually double the recipes because I've done that before and it usually ends up in disaster and I just have syrup after. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't work, but um, I usually do two separate batches, but it doesn't take too long because like I said, we've already juiced all of the grapes and the juices ready to go. The one thing I wanted to mention about the grape juice, I juiced these grapes last weekend and they've been in the fridge ever since, which is fine. You can also freeze it and just rethaw it. But if you are going to juice your grapes, make sure you let the juice sit in the fridge for at least 24 hours or even 48 hours because there are tartrate crystals that form. Some people call them wine crystals and it's like a gritty sediment and it will go to the bottom of your jar. So don't shake this because they will be at the bottom and then you can just pour the juice off or you can pour it through a strainer if you want. Usually they the sediment stays at the bottom and you don't want gritty stuff in your jam or your jelly. Another thing about wild grape juice is, or any grape juice, is that make sure you're wearing old clothes or use old tea towels and cloths because that stuff does not come out. All right, I'm going to measure out um, seven cups of juice. All right, there's four cups and we'll pour it into the stock pot need um, three more cups. So I just set that to medium heat and I've got the juice in the pot. Now I'm going to pour in my Serto pectin crystals and whisk those in. Okay, we're gonna let that come to a boil. And then once it comes to a boil, we'll let it boil for a minute and then we will pour the sugar in all at once. I'm gonna measure out five and a half cups of sugar here. And that'll be ready to go when the juice has boiled for a minute. So this may look like a ton of sugar, which it is, um, <laughs> But wild grapes are, are really quite tart, so it makes a really lovely jelly and you really do need this much sugar. All right, my juice has come to a full rolling boil and I want to set a timer for one minute. I wanted to show you some of those tartrate crystals at the bottom. You can see the sediment. It's a better view. It's, it's almost like black sand or something and it, and it feels like it too. 
So these crystals aren't harmful, but they just wouldn't be very pleasant in your jelly. My juice has been boiling for a minute and I'm going to add the sugar all at once. We're gonna let that come to a boil and the directions say boil for a minute, but if you remember, we adjusted the sugar to juice ratio. So I will let that boil until I can tell it's come to the, the gel stage and I'll show you that when it gets there and I'll bring my jars out and have them ready to fill. And these aren't my usual glasses. These are my reading glasses. I broke my other ones. I tried to tape them and then crazy glue them, but that didn't work. So I'll have to get a new pair. So one way you can tell whether um, your jam or your jelly is ready, you can use a candy thermometer and you see right there, it says jam 220 degrees. So usually jam or jelly will gel at eight degrees above boiling point. Now that depends on where you live and your elevation, of course. So if you're using a candy thermometer, you have to make sure it is accurate. So at sea level, water boils at 212 degrees. Um, so what you do is you'd put your candy thermometer into a pot of boiling water and let it sit there so that you get an accurate reading. And if it says 212 degrees, then you know it is calibrated and it's correct. Um, let's say it reads 210 degrees up, um, in the boiling water. That means your candy thermometer is two degrees off and you need to um, adjust when you're doing your recipes. So usually I'll just um, put my candy thermometer in the pot and once it reaches that temperature, I know it should be done, but there are other ways to tell if you don't have a candy thermometer. So when the jam is getting close to when you think it's it should be set, I usually put a little, um, a little bit of jelly in a dish and stick it in the freezer and then I'll be able to tell after it's been sitting there for a couple of minutes if it's gelling or if it's at the right consistency that we like. Okay, we'll check this. Not quite done. You wanna keep your jam simmering, but you don't want it boiling too hard because you don't also want it to scorch on the bottom. So I just kinda of keep giving it a stir here because that'll be awful. All of that work to get that juice and all this sugar would be wasted if you burnt or scorched the jelly on the bottom. So you can see the jelly is um, boiling away nicely. It's not kind of going crazy. And I also have my stove top turned down to number two because I don't want this to scorch. So another way you can tell if the gelling stage has been reached is you can dip a metal spoon into the jam or the jelly. You can see that's really light and syrupy and it drips off pretty quickly. Tilt it, but once it has reached the gelling stage, which it has not because it is only at 214 degrees right now. Um, once these drips start to get really heavy and syrupy and they just kind of sheet off the spoon, then we know the gelling stage has been reached. Also when your um, jelly boils up like this with tiny bubbles, it's close to getting to be the gel stage. We find this happens with our maple syrup too and we can always tell when it's starting to get nice and thick and ready to be finished. Yeah, it's getting close. You can see it's, there's some at the bottom of the spoon that's not coming off as easily. It's hard to tell in this light and with the steam, but you can just see it at the corner there, or at the bottom, I should say. We'll do another freezer test so you can see. So you can see it's at 219, so it's getting up there. It's almost done. Okay, just took it out of the freezer. There, that's nice. That'll set up nicely. To get the jelly to this stage, I let it boil over the stove top for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna stir this, stir the foam down. There really wasn't much anyway. I'm just gonna give that a stir for a couple of minutes. And I have my canning pot ready to go as well. So you want to fill your jars to a quarter inch headspace and that's what that little line is right there. So that one is a quarter inch headspace, this one in the middle is a half inch headspace, and this bottom one is an inch headspace. But we want to fill them right up to the quarter inch headspace. Okay. 
So you want to take a clean wet cloth and wipe the rim because if there's any jelly on there that's going to ruin your seal. This funnel you'll be able to see that it's already gelled. That we did take it off at the right time. I'm going to add the filled jars into the canning pot. And these lids are on slightly tighter than finger tight. And you can see the water is an inch above the lids, so I'm going to put this back on, turn the temperature up, so it comes to a full rolling boil. My timer's gone off, I'm just going to turn off that stove and I'm just gonna move that off the heat and just let that settle down for a minute. I'm just gonna take the lid off, but tilt it this way so you don't get a steam burn. And you also need a tea towel here so that the hot jars don't crack on the cold counter. So we'll take these out. If there's water on the lid, just leave that there. You can dry it later. Since I've just taken these out of the canner, you want to keep these jars on the counter for about 24 hours before you put them in your jelly cupboard or on the shelf somewhere. But what I always do is I always um, remove these rings and wipe off my jars and clean them off and then put them on the shelf. I store all of my canned goods with no rings on them. And the reason why I do that is if the seal actually ends up um, lifting, then this ring will not be holding that seal down and then I'll know that the seal has broken. So I'm gonna just try this. It's kind of a nice set there already. Yeah, it actually is quite a nice set. Anyway, I'll try this. Tart and sweet at the same time, and it's excellent on tea biscuits, toast, anything, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It's really good. Now, if you would rather to keep the sugar to juice ratio like the instructions say, that's up to you. You can add more sugar than I did if you like, but um, like I said, keep in mind wild grapes are more tart than the Concord grapes, so this is a, a slightly tart jelly. Tart but sweet. So batch number one is done. I'm gonna be working on batch number two. And I think I better make some tea biscuits tomorrow to be a vehicle for this jelly because it's so good. And I'll leave the link above to my tea biscuit recipe. And also, uh, I'm gonna leave a link to the video I did when I went picking these wild grapes and it shows you uh, what to look for and what to be cautious of because there are a couple of lookalikes. So I'll leave that link above too. And hopefully next fall you can, or this coming fall, you can pick some wild grapes and make this jelly. So again, thanks for coming along with me. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you again next time.